Game Maker How to Make a Pause Game Button. Pause your game when you need to take a little break, but also maintain everything that was happening on the screen in the background. So when you hit pause, not just show a pause button like I've done in a previous simple video, but actually have the pause button and your game is still sitting there, uh, the game pieces behind. So it doesn't look like you've gone to another world, right? Looks like you've just taken a temporary pause. Now for this one, what I've done is I've just built off a video which was called Pause Game Button Simple, and I've just added something uh, called Surfaces. Now this is a little trick here, so if you're just a total beginner, I guess you could copy-paste this, but, you know, it gets a little trickier here. Here's what I've done. In the room that I want to have Pause Ability, I've added this object here called the Pause Detector, and I've put it in the room, and then here's the code for the Pause Detector. In the create event, what I've done is I've just given it a variable called paused, set it equal to zero. Zero is when I am not paused, and when I am paused, I'm going to switch that to one. Here I have another variable called my surface. What this is going to be for is when I pause the game, I'm going to take all those game pieces that are currently in there, and I'm going to take their sprites, and I'm going to draw them to an image in the memory of the computer. This is the image which is basically replicating the screen and that is going to be in the background of uh, my pause. So I've called that my surface because it uses something in Game Maker called surfaces that you may want to go watch a video on. It's, you can do some cool effects with them. So right now I've just said my surface is zero. The player is eventually going to hit the P key to pause the game. And here's what I'm going to do. If pause is zero which it will be, I'm going to switch paused to 1. That's it. Otherwise, I'm going to activate all instances and put paused back to 0. So what this is about is part of switching the game to paused, you're going to see in a second, is I'm going to deactivate all the objects on the screen except for this pause detector. So if I'm going to be turning the game back on again, I have to reactivate them all. So really you should come back and look at this code after you've gone and seen the effect of paused equals one. So when I've turned this paused equals to one, well, that can't just pause the game. Here's where that paused equals one is having an effect. In the draw method of the pause detector, what I'm doing is I ask a quick question. I know a lot of code, huh? I say if paused is one, and remember, we just turned it to 1 when they hit the key. This is where I'm going to create a surface. Surface my surface. Notice I make it the width of the room and the room height, so it matches the size of the room. I set the drawing target to my surface, so this sort of picture, or this image in memory that I just made, so that all further draw commands now draw to my surface. They don't draw to the screen. And I do this, I say with all. So basically this is with every sprite or every object I have in the room right now. I say if sprite exists, sprite index. Some objects in the room might not have a sprite assigned to them. And so I have to do this quick check. But basically I'm saying here, if this object running the code, if its sprite index is a sprite that exists, then draw that sprite at the object's x and y position. So what I'm really doing here is I'm basically going through all the objects and I'm drawing them at their same x and y position onto my surface, which is sitting there in memory, right? A little temporary spot to draw. When all the objects in the room have done this, they've basically drawn themselves in there. I go surface reset target. What this does is now all draw commands will now be back to the regular screen target. And I switch this variable pause to 2. This is really important because what I don't want to do is I don't want to keep doing this. Okay, that's sort of a costly draw there. Oh, somebody's phoning. Hold on. All right, my mama wanted to know how to set the time on the VCR, but uh, I told her I was busy making videos. Okay, anyways, this thing right here, 
that's a costly a thing we don't want to have to keep doing. We only have to draw all our objects to the surface once, right? To get a little snapshot of the screen. And so that's why I switched pause to two. Okay, so this will never take place again. And then you'll see the crucial line here. I deactivate all the instances in the room. And the true here says, but don't turn me off. And remember, I'm coding in the pause detector. I don't want the pause detector to be deactivated, or then it won't be able to do this next part here, okay, which is all the drawing. Now remember, I had switched pause to two. So the next time that the draw event takes place, pause will be two. And it's going to be else if pause equals two will be true, and it's going to do all this. And you'll see some pretty easy code here. A little command draw surface, which means take some surface, and I'm going to say my surface, which has all my objects drawn, right, in memory onto it, and basically slap it starting at the top left corner. And since it's been made to be the exact same size of the room, that'll be the perfect fit. Then I switch the horizontal aligning and vertical aligning of text to center and middle so that when I draw my text out, it'll be nice and centered. And then I draw a rectangle, and then I actually draw the text paused. And that's basically it. This is the key one right here, though. I'm constantly just drawing the surface every single draw event, and that'll be the background. So let's see how this works here. So we got all these objects sitting there in the room. I hit the P key. Just for a brief second, that pause variable is going to be 1. It's going to draw all these objects that you see here right now. Everything is going to be drawn to the surface. And so what you're seeing now is pause was 1. It copied everything to the surface. Then that pause variable switched to 2. Now it's running the code that just takes that surface and constantly draws it here onto the screen. And so these really aren't the objects. These are, uh, this is just one big image that you manually drew yourself there in the code that's sitting there in the background. That's the surface. And uh, then we drew the rectangle and the word pause. Now when I hit P again, beautiful. Okay, it comes out of it and the game continues from basically exactly where it was left off. Now there's one other thing here we should do that I didn't have in that code. Let's go check that out. The one thing I left out of there that I just remembered now as I was uh, hitting the pause button there was in our pause detector, when you do this here, whoops, sorry. When we first detect we're paused, we create a surface. Every time the person hits the uh, P key, it's going to do surface create. When we're finished with the surface, you should delete it, or you get a little bit of a memory leak, and you just get all these surfaces being created in memory there. So we need to basically delete, get rid of the surface. And the way we do that is we can just do it here when they hit the P key. You'll see here, we know that's reactivating. So we can just sneak this little command here called surface free, and I want to free my surface. Okay, the surface is sort of let go, it's, uh, it's memory no longer needed. Okay, so that's a good programming thing you should do at the end. Now, that being said, that's a nice little pause system. If you just have one room that stays the same size, perfect. If you want to do this with views, because you've learned about views a bit, you apply the same thing, but the only thing you would do here in the draw is uh, you just have to be a little trickier here with some mathematics to make sure you're drawing your objects in the correct location onto the surface. So when you're drawing on the surface here, you'd have to shift the X and Y based on the views. If that makes no sense to you, uh, don't worry about it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can throw this in your game and it works well for you.